Donald Trump is not a pro peace president. And you need to stop lying about that because you are going to get people killed. You are getting people killed. Buying into these lies that we have heard from presidents, presidential candidates, duopoly politicians for decades, centuries. It, it, this has to stop. Yesterday, I covered the story of Donald Trump announcing that he's going to bring back thousands of troops from Iraq and Afghanistan. We still have thousands of troops in Iraq and Afghanistan after Donald Trump has been president for three and a half years. If that wasn't enough to make you call bullshit, I don't know how blind and delusional you are in your support for Donald Trump. I don't want to say as, as a he's a populist more than anything else. I, I mean, I guess it's true that he's a fascist, you know, by Mussolini's definition and that he wants and promotes the merging of corporations and the state. You could say he's a he's a communist in the sense that we have most of the 10, well, all of the 10 planks of the communist manifesto at least partially in effect currently in the United States in a way that Donald Trump is not challenged at all as president. And, and I guess it's fair to call Donald Trump a socialist because he wants to maintain all of the functions in American society that are already socialized. Socialized retirement, socialized public safety, socialized defense, socialized safety net, social... I mean, I, I could keep going and, and, and name all these things we have this government-based, you know, communal ownership of. And, and to hear Trump supporters just blindly deny this, you know, I, I wonder if they're all, like, if this is, this is like, I, Donald Trump, a former Democrat from New York City, somehow fooled the Republican Party into nominating him. And I would say, geez, is this the sign? Is, has the Republican Party finally been overrun by Marxists? And it's like, not, nah, nah, mm, has been for a long time. And then I wonder, like, people saying they support Trump who know better, like, who know these things. Like, are, are they all, are, are we surrounded? Like, is, are, are are there really that many communists in the United States? I, I wonder if, if like if the people like like Charlie Kirk, who, who espouses libertarian values, and says, but we have to support Donald Trump. How do you go from I believe in freedom, and that's why we have to vote for this socialist, communist, fascist warmonger? You can't. I, I, you can't be serious. Are these people all covert communists, Marxists? Like, be angry at BLM because they have some founders who were in their organization openly Marxist. Well, I'm I'm not really afraid of the people who are openly Marxist. I'm more afraid of of these propaganda demons. I I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how else to describe them who try to get you to believe that Donald Trump is conservative, pro-freedom, anti-war after bump stocks, red flag law support, and growing government. I, I just, I, I, I am, I, I, I'm at a loss. I, I'm really at a loss. And I, I hope people don't fall for this anymore. Like, how do, how do you not see this? Now, after pointing out yesterday that Donald Trump's troop withdrawal from Iraq and Afghanistan is, is best described as uh, a pedophile giving candy to, its, to his victims, right? Do you celebrate that? Like, well, I like the taste of candy. I think children should have, have the, get to enjoy candy. So, you know, let's celebrate the good things. And if a pedophile is giving his victims candy, let's celebrate that. Do you not hear how absurd that sounds? Because that's exactly how you sound to anybody who is paying attention, who knows what's going on when you say, 
well, we should celebrate Trump bringing home some of the troops because, you know, that in and of itself, that's a good thing. Not if it's bullshit propaganda. Not if it's going to be used to fuck everybody worse later. Not if it's nonsense, baseless political pandering designed to hide just how pro-military-industrial complex Donald Trump is. And, oh, but Adam, he came out and he said, well, the military brass loves or hates me, even though the troops love me because I'm, they just want to fight all these endless wars. You act like no president before has ever lied about war or their intentions. Like, oh, yeah, now it's Trump. Now it's believable. Now that we've had a president who's lied publicly more than any other in history, <laughs> this is the one whose propaganda bullshit we should put stake in. No. And if it was, you know, if Saudi Arabia and Yemen and and just the continuation of the occupations in Iraq and Afghanistan and all the other evil that the U.S. military is currently conducting around the world wasn't enough. Because people will still make excuses. Haven't you read the Q drops, Adam? Trump is secretly working against the global satanic pedophile whatever. No, he's perpetuating it, if anything. Drain the swamp? Yeah, right. After appointing all the worst swamp monsters? I mean, I don't know who I'm arguing with here, honestly. It's, it, this, I feel like I'm like arguing with these vocal Trump supporters who claim all this nonsense about him. It's kind of like arguing with the mainstream media that we know is set up as a propaganda arm of the establishment. Are these infiltrators? I hope I'm talking to the people who might be tempted to believe this. Who might be tempted to think that Donald Trump is 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 anything other than a continuation of the evil of the establishment. I mean, I'm glad that the people still want peace and troops withdrawn from Iraq and Afghanistan. Holy shit. 19 years after 9-11? 17 years after the invasion of Iraq? 19 years after the invasion of Afghanistan? Boy, I, I I was in Iraq in 2004. And to think that the Marines I watched die in combat, died in vain, is bad enough. But it's worse when I see that people refuse to fucking listen to reason. So if you want a little more proof, and this is gonna like if you're if you're if you have a shred of respect left for Donald Trump, get ready to kiss it goodbye. As as I was discussing this yesterday, someone pointed out to me on Twitter, actually, they were arguing with someone else. <laughs> Look at Trump's eight vetoes. What do five of eight of them have in common? This is going to really upset you. If again, if you if you have any shred of respect left for our president. So first veto, there was an attempt to a uh, joint resolution to overturn Trump's declaration of national emergency at the Mexico US border. He vetoed it. The override attempt failed. But his second veto April 16, 2019, vetoed SJ Res 7 joint resolution to direct the removal of U.S. armed forces from hostilities in the Republic of Yemen that have not been authorized by Congress. The measure was a joint resolution to end U.S. participation in Yemen civil war and denounce the Saudi-led bombing campaign there. Override attempt failed in Senate. By the way, none of Trump's vetoes have ever been overridden. I think he's astute politically that way, although it's not hard when you're president to say, oh, well, the, the Senate didn't get to 66 votes on this. And if I veto it, none of that will change. 
So I'm going to veto it. On July 24, 2019, he vetoed the joint resolution that prohibits the proposal, proposed sale of various defense articles and related support services to Saudi Arabia, the United Kingdom, Spain, and Italy. As described in Executive Communication 1427, published in Congressional Record on June 3, 2019, override attempt failed in Senate. The U.S. Congress, with an approval rating in the single digits, is more anti-war than Trump, more anti-military industrial complex than Trump. I'll say it again. The joint resolution that prohibits the proposed sale of various defense articles and related support services to Saudi Arabia, the UK, Spain, and Italy. Yeah, those wonderful companies making the bomb. On July 24, 2019, vetoed the joint resolution that prohibits the proposed sale of various defense articles and related support services to the United Arab Emirates, the UK, and France. And as described in Executive Communication 1325, blah, 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 right attempt failed. July 24, 2019, vetoed joint resolution that prohibits the sale of various events, articles, and related support services to Saudi Arabia and the UK. As described in Executive Communication 1422, override attempt failed. October 15, 2019, veto the joint resolution that would terminate the national emergency declared in Proclamation 9844, February 15, 2019, regarding the ongoing crisis on the southern border. Same shit as the first one, right? And then the last one, uh, well, here, let's go, let's go to number seven here. On May 6, 2020, not very long ago, vetoed. SJ Res 6 8 joint resolution to direct the removal of U.S. armed forces from hostilities against the Islamic Republic of Iran that have not been authorized by Congress. Do I have to explain that? Congress, when it was put to a vote, said, yeah. We don't want the U.S. military provoking war with Iran. And Trump said, fuck you. Here's my veto. Now, the other, the last one. May 29, 2020, vetoed uh, H.J. Res. 76, a joint resolution providing for a congressional disapproval under Chapter 8 of Title V, U.S. Code of the Rule submitted to the, by the Department of Education relating to borrower defense institutional accountability. Override attempt failed in health. Five out of eight of these. So two, uh, two, two about the emerg uh, national emergency on the Mexican border. One about Department of Education relating to borrower defense institutional accountability. And the other five pro-military industrial complex vetoes to override the will of Congress. If that's not enough for you, it's okay. We can look at his drone strikes. Under Donald Trump, drone strikes far exceed Obama's numbers from Chicago Sun Time. If I gave you a pop quiz on recent current events, I bet you do pretty well. Thanks to a 24 hour cable news cycle, late night talk shows, social media, and popular culture, you undoubtedly know that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle had their first child this week. By the way, this, this story is from a year ago. This was true a year ago. And somehow the megatards who pretend to be pro-peace missed this. You can likely go into some detail about the Mueller report. You probably have an opinion of Attorney General William Barr. But what would you say if I asked you the following multiple choice question? When it comes to President Obama's drone wars, President Trump has A, ended them, B, continued them, or C, escalated them. It's okay. You're forgiven for not knowing the answer. It's C. 
This administration has not only surpassed the previous one's drone strike volume overseas, it has made the drone wars even more secretive, if that's possible. We can cobble together some reporting on the numbers, but finding exact figures on drone strikes in the Trump administration is difficult. More on that in a minute. According to a 2018 report on, in the Daily Beast, Obama launched 186 drone strikes in Yemen, Somalia, and Pakistan during his first two years in office in Trump's first two years. He launched 238. The Trump administration has carried 176 strikes in Yemen in just two years compared with 154 there during all eight years of Obama's tenure, according to account by the Associated Press and the Bureau of Investigative Journalism. Experts also say drone strikes under Trump have surged in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. And as was the case during Obama's presidency, these strikes have resulted in untold numbers of civilian casualties. According to the UN Assistance Mission, Afghanistan U.S. drone strikes in Afghanistan killed more than 150 civilians in the first nine months of 2018. Amnesty International reports that drones killed at least 14 civilians in Somalia since 2017. As of January this year, U.S. drone strikes fighting ISIS in Iraq and Syria have killed at least 1,257 civilians, according to the Pentagon themselves. Emphasis mine. And a monitoring group, Air Wars, estimates the number to be as great as 7,500. that you might not be aware of what should be a startling and deeply troubling escalation in unaccountable remote control warfare by the U.S. is both by design and default. And yes, as the article points out, Obama paved the way. But however, and it concludes, however, you can't blame the media for this one. Refreshingly, many mainstream media outlets have been reporting on this escalation for months, if not years. From foreign policy to the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Fox News, the Washington Post to CNN, the issue is getting coverage whether Americans care or not is another story. De-escalating our involvement, even shadow or unmanned in overseas conflicts was something that many Trump critics and supporters were welcoming, especially abroad. One CBC headline from 2016 read, Drone King Barack Obama will not be missed. Another from The Guardian, at least President Trump would ground the drones. It was all wishful thinking. And by the way, this is from, I, I got to credit, SC Cup, the host of SC Cup, unfiltered on CNN. Do Americans care? Have we been so bullied into our own little corner of the world? under this dark cloud of coronavirus hanging over everything, that we don't have time to care that the same government that is doing this to us is doing it so that they can continue to get away with this evil. And it is all in the name of President Donald J. Trump. Wishful thinking. Delusional ignorance. Willfully turning a blind eye to human suffering. To anybody still trying to say that Donald Trump is in any meaningful anti way anti-war at this point, fuck you. Fuck you. You are now knowingly contributing to this evil. I hope you all lose your audiences and your credibility. Because the longer that America allows this to go on, the worse it's going to get. The more people, the more innocent people are going to die. And we should be so grateful right now. We should be on our knees thanking God that Muslims were made with so much self-control and restraint. If you count every single non-Muslim ever killed by 
extremist Islamic terrorism. It doesn't account for a drop in the bucket of Muslim lives that have been killed by American military imperialism. I don't know what else to say. To deny this is to deny our common humanity and thus your own. And it's happened to Americans too. Don't forget the case of the extremist cleric American who just happened to be overseas and be the victim of a drone strike and then his kid killed by another drone strike. We have to fight them over there so we don't fight them over here. No. The real enemy is right here at home. And I would say his name is Donald, Dr Donald J. Trump. But it's a lot deeper than that. The duopoly, the military industrial complex. It's time to be Americans again and overthrow this whole nonsense. Lives are at stake.